I'm John Paul Capodigro. Hi, and I'm Joyce Tennyson. So Joyce, we were talking about beauty, and you shared a lovely quote. I've been challenged by a quote recently. I've been sharing a lot of quotes on beauty and social networks just recently. It's what kind of brought this stuff up. And one in particular really challenged me. Dostoevsky's Beauty Will Save the World. That's, that's a big one. <laughs> well, and a lot of times I feel like beauty will save me when I come in contact with uh, a greater reality. Uh, maybe it's some principle in the world that uh, is translated in a specific way. Maybe it's finding the value in day-to-day -day moments mm -hmm. that didn't recognize but suddenly found a way to see them in a, in a different light. Uh, at the same time, I think we've also been talking about how beauty can be uh, used inappropriately or can become a, a cultural preoccupation that moves us along the lines in a value structure that, that isn't always helpful. Uh, consider uh, women's body images, mm -hmm. body type images, mm -hmm. and, and the things that they have to shoulder, how those change and and the notion of trying to get beyond skin-deep beauty mm -hmm. and moving into other kinds of beauty and how we might celebrate that culturally. Um, beauty can be a dangerous thing at the same time. Do you, do you agree? Yes, I mean, I think beauty is has so many definitions. It can apply to nature or a person or architecture or art or music. I think, uh, you know, beauty has many different uh, ways of being interpreted and some some uh, criterion are universal, I think. Mm, I but agree. then uh, then there are some, once you have leveled the field, and I think most people would agree something, certain things are beautiful. They may not personally react to them uh, totally, but they could agree that, that there, there, is, there are certain criteria that, that, are, uh, that need to be there for beauty to exist. Mm. It's actually pretty challenging to come up with those criteria, at least consensus along those criteria. Absolutely. At the same time, Absolutely. I think there are great works of art that have been celebrated throughout the ages, not just because they're culturally important, but because people from all cultures react to them in a fairly strong way. So I think there is something universal. But we already described three different types of beauty, universal, cultural, and personal. Maybe we need to put a lot of adjectives to qualify the type of beauty that we're talking about when we're talking about it. I think that, uh, yeah, I, absolutely. Um, Where do you look to in culture for celebrations of, of an internal beauty? Uh, something that moves beyond the superficial? Within culture? Yeah. Well, I think that in the end, love is beauty, mm. and so anytime we're uh, connecting with um, another human being, there is a kind of beauty implicit in that, if there is a real connection. And I don't mean just relationship, sexual love, uh, but friendship, family, ties. I think in the end, when people die, that's what they most remember, are those moments of beauty when they've really connected with someone. Mm. So by extension, maybe some of the most beautiful things we might see are expressions of love. I think so. I think you just sort of hit it right on the head right there. It could be uh, somebody working in an advocacy position and, and working compassionately with people who are in challenged situations, or it could simply be the uh, expression of, of love between two new lovers, or between a family member and a child, but there's still that quality of uh, caring, compassion, of, of celebrating the spirit in a way. Absolutely. I feel it often when I'm teaching. Hmm. When, I, when I think about moments when I have really been graced with some, a, a beautiful moment, it's often um, at those rare moments when I feel like there has, the group has, has transformed in some way and that there, there, there has been an opening and people feel excited and passionate about creating again, sometimes after years of not being connected with that. And isn't it interesting that a moment like that can be more energizing and more tangible, or at least have more durable effects than, let's say, all the technique that might come out of a workshop or a book, or that sometimes those personal moments of connection are far more important? Absolutely, and that's why one of my favorite quotes is always the Martha Graham quote where she says, I can just paraphrase it, but that 
all the technique in the world um, doesn't help if it doesn't make the heart beat faster. Mm. So, so maybe you know, that's the function of, of beauty is to have a deep, heartfelt connection. Right. And sometimes the heart will beat faster if the technique isn't in dance or in many of the arts, isn't completely perfect, but that you see that striving and that there's this passion in the performance. Mm. You know? and, uh, and I think that I've always remembered that. It's the passion in the doing, in the, um, in the yearning, in the, rather than the completely uh, sterile, perfect object right. it often has. Another form of beauty. Yeah, I, exactly. I don't care whether it's champion lettuce slicing. Right. But if somebody's really excited about what they're doing and doing it extremely well, I think that's a triumph for the human spirit. It that's is. another thing that I think is one of the most beautiful things to observe. I think in the Special Olympics, I always, when I see the Special Olympics, I, I always feel so touched and moved by that, uh, you know, the simplicity of the yearning and the the, the goodwill that it fosters among the human. Mm. So do you hold these ideas in your heart when you're thinking about making your own images and, and what those images might communicate, share, encourage? People are always asking me where I get my ideas from for a new project. And I can honestly say that they come spontaneously from whatever life passage I am leaving and, and starting over on. For mm. example, you know... Uh, for so many years, I worked with people and portraits, and, and I love that because I'm a people person. Um, but at a certain point after doing, like, I think it was eight back-to-back -back people books, mm. with I needed a break. And so I started the journey of looking um, and recording nature in a way that was personal to me. The close-ups of the flowers. Now this tree series that I've been working on is actually coming full circle um, with my love of nature, which I've had since I was a child. I think my love of nature as I was growing up saved me. Uh, some of my best memories growing up in, you know, not the perfect family as many of us have had, was going out in nature, writing poetry, making little origami boats, and there was a little pond near my house, and putting these little origami poems out onto the water. and releasing them to the universe and feeling somehow connected to the life force of art. And uh, so I'm very happy right now living more in nature. Uh, but I, I loved my 25 years in New York City. Uh, so it's, it, I think it changes. I, I think our projects for our work change as, as we change. and. And we yearn for things that we haven't yet created. Cool. Thanks for sharing that.